1015 FM, 720 AM. KDON, the talk of Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. One full hour of wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's bring on the tag team of Andrew Fish Fame. Joe DeFalco, and your host, Mark Hoke. Fish is so happy. I love it. I love making fish happy. It's the little things. It is the little things. We're like the New Day now. You know, I don't know about that, but Joe would be the big E of the group. Is he? Yeah, you're the Xavier and I'm the Kofi. How do I get Xavier? You're the king. I don't know. (laughs) That's unbelievable. Wow. Well, hey, welcome to the Mark Hoke Show. I'm Mark Hoke. Thanks for being with us today. In case you weren't with us yesterday, well, now here we are again. A little different team, but uh, same pro wrestling fun. Same stable. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, we got a little stable there. James Samuel doing the, taking the, uh, he's like the fourth guy. Yes. You know, kind of like the the Luger Wyndham dude, and I, but I got I got Arnon Tully right here. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he's the Paul Roma. Oh, <laughs> that's a little harsh. <laughs> Paul Roma underrated though. But thank you for joining us here on KDWN one hundred one five FM. So we're on your FM dial. We're also on your AM dial at seven twenty. Boy, double double torture for Las Vegas. I mean, double excitement for Las Vegas. That's that's the way I look at it. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, Andrew Fishfein, who uh, does SportsX Radio here on KDWN on Monday nights with his partner, Chips Barnes. What's up? Nothing. Just another amazing day of college football, getting ready for the NFL, but more importantly, wrestling. Yes. And, of course, back from New York. I don't know if he's physically he's physically back. Mentally, it might be a question mark. But we have our friend from future stars of wrestling here in Las Vegas, Joe DeFalco. Morning, Joe. What's up? Oh, good morning. Uh, what do you mean tag team? It's a trios. Yes, it is a trio. Uh, that's what I said. We're the New Day. And it was good. Like yesterday was the warm up, like AEW Dark, and then today's like the main show. <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, well, I, I was going to call yesterday Thunder, but yeah, I got you. It, it's kind of funny. <laughs> it, it's funny you say that, though, because you know I get to talk about some of the stuff that happened with with James on Saturday night and then thoughts come into my mind and things that I could have said. They do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the brain does function. On occasion. I was say on occasion. On occasion. When I'm not going crazy in the booth. But yeah, so we come in here and see and now we're gonna call this a segue because you know whose brain doesn't function. It appears that WWE's brain does not oh, function. See good. see that see that segue? It was smooth just for you. That wasn't bad. I like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you like a seven point seven five on that. I'll take it. C plus, B minus. Yeah, not bad, not bad. But you know, it looked like we were gonna get to talk about actual wrestling for a while, and then Tuesday, you know, Tuesday we could get through what happened there. That wasn't too bad. But then the cuts hit, and and I I could imagine Joe, you're probably chomping at the bit to get to this. WWE had another. Another bloody day as another group of 18 wrestlers, plus, by the way, four executives were also let go at Titan Towers. Let's give you the rundown on who is gone in case your favorite wrestler is Eastwah. You ready for this list? Are you ready? Here we go. Degeneration X. Here we go. (laughs) Carrion Cross. See ya. Has been released. Hold your hold hold your tongue, Joe. Hold your tongue. Keith Lee. See ya. Gone. Nia Jax. Former, Adios. Former women's champion is gone. Great uh, hit row. A uh, great stable that they just brought up a week ago. Has a casualty out of it. B Fab was let go. The female of the group. See ya. Grand Metalik and Lince Dorado. That, was, that one we knew was coming. They both asked for their release. Mia Yim, who was in Retribution. 
she's gone. Reckoning. The son of Davy Boy Smith, Harry Smith. And I, I get a kick out of this because he was unassigned. <laughs> That's what it says here. They have a list of what shows they were on. He was unassigned because they never put him on. And let yeah, him he, was on, he was on one backstage segment at Raw. Yeah, good for him. And that was it. That was it. Eva Marie is gone. So she can get back to Instagram. Modeling. So basically, she came on to introduce Dewdrop and left. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah. And then the NXT cuts. Scarlet Bordeaux, of course, was is with Karrion Cross. So she is gone. Ember Moon has been released. Frankie Monet, who was Tara Valkyrie in Impact, wasn't she Women's Champion in Impact? Yeah. She is gone. Oni Lorcan, former tag team champion in NXT, with they, with Birch. So, but they, they didn't mm-hmm. they didn't get rid of Birch. Mm-hmm. They kept. <sighs> and then Jesse Kamea, Zeta Ramirez, Trey Baxter, Katrina Cortez, and Jeet Rama, gone, 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 gone. I called this round of cuts the we screwed you up and we don't know what to do with you, so we're gonna let you go. Cuts. This is unreal. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give Joe a shot at this because, of course, Carrie and Cross trained at Future Stars of Wrestling and someone that I know you know very well. Joe, your thoughts about Carrie and Cross and the rest of these cuts? Well, you know, a, a good amount of the cuts, we, we've talked about it forever between AEW and WWE. They just keep signing and signing and stockpiling. And. They make a lot of money, but they can make more money because there's just too many guys and there's just not enough spots for them. A uh, guy like Keith Lee, it's almost like you saw the writing on the wall that it was like they kind of pulled him out, gave him a stupid name, they kind of, you know, kind of dicked him around a little bit, and then would cross after, you know, Triple H. You know, I know for a fact loves him. Regal loves him, but that has nothing to do with the main roster where Vince has it. And to me, you know, Karrion Cross is everything that Vince McMahon would want in a champion. He's big. He looks good. He's great on the stick. He's got a character. But I hear, you know, that some of those cuts had to do with uh, vaccination policies. And oh, yeah, there were a few I, of them. Yeah, that I, I didn't. I didn't even think about that point. But yeah, and what what what, and, what seemed weird to me? I'm sorry to interrupt you. What seemed to me though was they were just repackaging Carrion Cross. I mean, it was just happening again for him. And then just to to to, to waste any time repackaging him if you're just going to cut him makes no sense. And, and that's why that kind of makes me believe that that had something to do with it. You know what I mean? And it's like. You know, I didn't understand the whole gig, you know, with Scarlett, you know, being there. And it was like, oh, it's, you know, it's the macho man and Elizabeth. And, you know, this guy's destined to be the heavyweight champion. So it's kind of like insanity to be to. So I could only believe because I had heard about four of the cuts had to do with the vaccination. And I'm pretty sure Kevin wasn't interested in being vaccinated. So, you know, that's definitely something that could have led to his issues, you know? Yeah, and I heard Nia Jax might have been in that category too, but the 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 one that one that really shocked me was B Fab. With them just bringing Hit Row up, you sign them to you, you sign them to a SmackDown contract. Great debut, everybody's excited about this group. And then you yank her out of that group in the first week. I, that to me, that 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 was cruel. And and I'm just gonna say that already. That was cruel. Why would you do that to somebody? If you're gonna, if you're thinking about letting them go, you could have waited to a debut to hit row for a couple of weeks, and then, you know, and, and kept her out of it. But that was just that was just wrong. Anybody? Fish. No. I, I I can't argue with that because it, it was it, it, again it's one of those things that unless it's unless it's also vaccinated relate vaccine related it makes no absolutely no sense for them to to make a big deal out of hit row being drafted to SmackDown having their debut last week and bringing her up and then cutting her I, I mean they they wouldn't do it just to be cruel yeah Joe what do you, what do you think about that 
Well, you know, uh, the problem has a lot to do with the fact that on Hit Row, she was somebody who I don't know if there was a place for her on the roster because of her experience level. But, you know, if you're bringing in the group and that was the, the gimmick, then you let her be a valet, you let her be the manager, and you let her continue to work to get better, and then you build a storyline around her. That way she's still involved, people get to know who it is, and then six months when you know the person's ready to have a match, you're already built in. It's kind of like the old days with the vignettes, that they built it up, built it up, built it up. Well, now this person could be seen on TV, on SmackDown every week, and then hopefully when... You know, she's ready for the match. People are already, you know, engaged. And, you know, I heard that, you know, nowhere near ready to be part of the main roster. No, but, I, I, I was she had a great match, if, or not a great match, a very good match a few weeks ago with uh, the Diamond Mine. I can't think of the, the, the wrestler's name from the Diamond Mine. It was a no DQ match. It was actually a, it was a pretty good match. But that was an NXT level match, not a SmackDown level match. Yeah, I mean, and and you know, this is, of course, WWE looking. It's looking like they're just you know making some trim downs in the entire company, and this new philosophy of you're not this age, you're not this height, you're not this weight, you're gone. And and some leaks came out about Keith Lee saying that he was difficult. Now we already went through this with Bray Wyatt. So now, what, all of a sudden, everybody in the back when you're screwing up their character is being difficult? I mean, that's not fair. I mean, Keith Lee, they, they screwed up Keith Lee. They just screwed it up. And, you know, and, and it seems like they are trying to deflect blame to the wrestlers for this. When you know, Keith Lee, <laughs> uh, actually on Twitter, when somebody asked him about the Bearcat thing, and he laughingly said, no, that wasn't my idea. The Bearcat was not my idea. Um, you know, carrying cross. Somebody asked him if he get the helmet, and said no one would want that piece of duty. Uh, it's 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 just I I don't understand what they're you know while you're you're trying to trim the fat and you're trying to fit into a philosophy, but at the same time, these just seem so pointless. And, and the timing of this is horrible because now, obviously, with the Ring of Honor thing, there's a glut of wrestlers now on the open market. Yeah, and and I'm curious, Joe, as a promoter. What are you hearing from uh, after these cuts? You know, and of course, the ROH guy's gone. Uh, what What's happening out there on the independent circuit? Well, you know, it's going to be a bidding war. You know, sometimes you think, hey, you know what? All these other guys, you know, it's going to drive down the prices. But everybody wants to have Jay Lethal on their show. Everybody wants to have Cross on their show. Now, the people who are going to pay the price are those guys that have been used a lot. And, you know, they were that last group that came in. And now there's going to be a new group. People want to see fresh faces. So for us, you know, getting Karrion Cross to come back to Vegas is a huge deal. You know, so maybe if we were looking at, you know, bringing in – say, a Brian Cage, who we love Brian Cage. But now if the decision's made to make one or the other, obviously we're going to go with Cross. You know, now if we can afford it, we would love to have a Brian Cage on the show. But when you add those hot new free agents, the Ring of Honor crew, you know, and, and, and the list of the guys, Keith Lee, you want to put those guys on the show, you know, they're, they're going to command X amount of dollars, you know. I'm hoping, you know, the relationship with Cross gives us a good deal, which I know he'll give us a good deal, but that good deal is probably three or four times more than I paid him before he left. <laughs> probably. <laughs> and that's like, hey, thanks, Kev. You know? <laughs> it's like, it was like, remember when you didn't have to use those couple of months, you know, and I, and I let you roll, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well. Well, I hope that works out for you. We'd, we'd love to see him back here in Las Vegas. Without, un you undoubtedly. I, I, to be honest with you, that was the only thing that got me kind of excited about the release was the, the thought that maybe he's going to come back and do something for FSW. 
87 days, he said. 87 days. Well, he said 89. That was two days ago. So. So now it's eighty-seven. Yeah, yeah. We, so, yeah, I can do, well, I can do that kind of math. Yeah. So the ones yeah. that are, the ones that are uh, that have the ninety-day non-compete clauses are free to work on February second of twenty twenty-two. Groundhog's so, Day. Yeah. So we'll we'll see who ends up where. But I, I, just going down this list of names, guys, who do you think would have a chance to end up? You know, or, or do you, I, sh- I should say this? Who would? Could end up in AEW. Who could end up in Impact? Uh, who's going to be fighting for a job out there? Do you do you guys see uh, places for these guys on the other two main shows? The two that I can go ahead, Joe. I, I was just going to say about Cross. You can eliminate Impact very quickly from that list. You know he he fought to get out of the contract, and they basically went back and forth, and they did not end on a good note. Impact didn't want to release him. You know, he threatened some litigation and, you know, but again, it's the wrestling business. You know what I mean? And, but I think that would be a reach. So in reality, AEW, but for most of those guys, I really think once they get released, they can, they could pound the indie circuit, especially in that Northeast, they could command big dollars, make that, Make your own schedule for a while. You know, relax a little. You know, it's probably been very stressful for those guys who've been in WWE, even the guys who did make it like Cross and Keith Lee, that they get put up on Raw. They were getting good pushes. Keith Lee was supposed to become the U.S. champ. You know, Cross was, you know, earmarked to be, you know, they were having him do the F5. I really made it believe that they were looking at him as a possible guy for Brock Lesnar down the line. Mm. And, you know, right now, chill. You're still getting paid for three months until your 90-day expires. They have a, a major league contract. They'll, they'll be fine. Now they can just do what they need to do. I The, the three names that stick out to me are all going to be women. I, I see Nia Jax being an AEW, but Ember Moon and Mia Yim, I can see both going to Impact. I think Mia Yim is a name that isn't talked about a lot, but I think she's a lot better than people give her credit for. I think WWE really screwed. I think oh, they I think the, the whole the whole retribution angle got screwed up, and I, I think they, that ruined every wrestler that was in that group. T Bar, Mace, all of them, and I think that that Mia Yim will be great. It would be great at Impact as as with Ember Moon. Uh, and you know, I wonder if with Karrion Cross uh, a possibility with AEW, would he be great there? Yes. I, There's no but, spot but, for him but, there. But the thing is, is that I think he's, you know, he'd probably have to change the gimmick a little bit of what he was doing in, in NXT, uh, certainly, because you've already got a guy there with Malachi Black who, you know, pretty similar character. So Karrion may have to change it up a little bit, maybe go a little more tough guy, you know, mean brawler, nasty dude. I, see, I don't think AEW is a good fit for Cross. Not that he wouldn't be a great fit wherever he goes, because I think he's fantastic. But I don't think there's enough for them to showcase Cross the way he needs to be showcased. What do you think about that, Joe? Uh, I get it. I, I just don't see the fit there right now. Because, as you said, Malachi Black was a guy that should have been a big deal in WWE. And... You know, him being there and him being in that spot, how much can you adjust Kevin Cross? It was kind of like in NXT, like the Dexter Loomis character was kind of similar. Yeah, agreed. You know, and there was that same psycho kind of character. And, you know, I've dealt with Kevin. Kevin, he, his personality, his character, it was crazy to me because in NXT, He got that monster push. He became the champion in no time until he got hurt and couldn't even defend and gave up the belt. But Scarlett did all the talking for him. And no offense to Scarlett, Kevin Cross is one of the best talkers in the business. And he got to where he was without even talking. You know, Malachi Black, how good of a talker is he? You know, Kevin, because of his character, that's what moved him so quick. Wrestling's wrestling. I know the move. You know the move. Whatever. It, it's finding somebody who knows. And Kevin was so precise at such a young spot when he couldn't wrestle yet, but he knew exactly what he wanted to do. So he's very, very wise to the business. And, you know, he's going to be successful no matter what. 
you know, there's a good chance, and I know he's always loved Japanese wrestling. So for him to go to Japan, you know, that would be a dream come true because I know when he first uh, did his tryouts and they liked him a lot. And Regal told him, it's like, listen, you want to wrestle? You want to you get that out of your system? Don't sign with WWE yet. You know, go out there, go around the world. And and it took him a couple of years. He could have signed with them. He chose not to. So now with the opening that's there, you know, him going to New Japan or doing something like that, he could he, he could be that next Bruiser Brody because of the intensity and the character that he could be a huge success. You know, he went to AAA, he was a monster. He went to Impact, he was a monster. He went to NXT, he was he's a monster. They And then they kind of, like, totally changed everything when he went to Raw. Yeah, he lost so, to Jeff Hardy. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, for and, no and, reason, and then beat him later. So yeah. I was like, well, what was the point? Yeah, and I and I can see your, your point on, on Cross being a great fit in Japan. His style, they're, they're, they would eat that up. Oh, absolutely. He'd be, absolutely. He'd, be a, he'd be a mega star in Japan. And I think, I mean, it would suck for us because we wouldn't get to see him up close and personal, but it would be great for him. Yeah, absolutely. So now, a, a, a couple things going on behind the scenes in terms of morale at WWE. We're hearing more and more that everybody is just. They got to be on, on eggshells, on walking on eggshells. Pins and needles right now and not happy. There seems to be a real push among the AEW guys that, man, you are just treating these people so badly and a lot of WWE guys coming in. Uh, you know, we heard on uh, Rampage this week a couple of major pot shots at John Laronitis and uh, Pritchard uh, would be from Max Casker, you know, making a little comment about Laronitis ending careers and the, the whole situation with Adam Cole that John Silver made reference to. This is this is turning into a we're not happy here and the other side is boy, this is just not look right. how, look how green the grass is over here. Yeah. It's it's a pretty crazy dynamic that I think's taking place. And and Joe, I'm curious if you're hearing anything about that right now too. Uh no, not really. But how how could any morale be good? How could it, you know that situation where nobody is safe? You know, who who would have thought that you know Cross would be released? You know, Scarlet. It was like the, it was the package. You know, some of those other guys, and it's like we had the last batch with with Taylor, and 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 they had a good crew of guys. But again, it's like. There's so many guys, and they supposedly want to change up this NXT. So they got Steiner's kid, they got uh, Rikishi's kid, Sefa, and it looks like they're trying to influx that young talent. And regardless of the situation, you know, is LA Knight's numbers, you know, his 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 days numbered because he is upwards of 38 years old, and it seems like that they're trying to recreate NXT. With the younger guys, how much time? He, I know he's the champ, Ciampa, but he he's up yeah. How there long's he age. gonna last? Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, the the only guy know, and, the only guy that feels got, has got to feel safe right now is Roman Reigns. Yeah, and you got two guys, uh, Johnny Gargano and Kyle O'Reilly. His contracts are coming up here. They went to SmackDown to wrestle a dark match. What? <laughs> they're fighting for their lives, and I have a feeling that they're not going to get their contracts renewed. And of no, course, we're looking they're, at they're part of that whole. ROH crew, you would think. So right. that kind of makes maybe not Gargano as much as Kyle O'Reilly, but, you know, they brought Bobby Fish back the second they could and Adam Cole and that group. So when, the second Kyle O'Reilly is available, I'm pretty sure he signed, sealed, and delivered already. I would, yeah, think, so. I, I would yeah, I think there's no question. And now with the news about John Moxley, being in alcohol rehab, what does that do for his career? Yeah, we're going to talk about that a whole lot more. And when we come back, a special announcement. And this is legit. This isn't one of those guys that gets on the radio and says, oh, I have an announcement to make, and it turns out to be, well, maybe we're going to. No, we have a special announcement. So stick around here on the Mark Hoke Show on KDWN, 101.5 FM, 720 AM. We'll be right back. 
1015 FM, 720 AM. Don, the talk of Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. I guess that's me. So I should start talking. I think that's usually how it works, right, Fish? Apparently. Yeah, it usually does. Mark Hoke Show. I'm Mark Hoke. Thanks for being with us. The best in pro wrestling news and entertainment. King of our time slot among all talking radio, uh, talking sports stations here in Las Vegas. Andrew Fish Fane. Joe DeFalco on the line. So I did that teaser. Are you guys ready? This is sure. exciting. No, I know. This is exciting. Joining us next week on the show, WWE Hall of Famer. Unless he gets released. They're not going <laughs> to so. Booker T will be joining us on the show. We are very excited to have Booker coming on. Of course, he has his... Houston-based promotion, uh, Reality Wrestling, uh, going to be coming into town, going to be down at the MGM. So check that out to get tickets. But uh, Booker T. That would be great. Will be with us. I'd love to talk to him. Booker's uh, Booker's always an interesting interview, too. Booker says some fun stuff. Occasionally gets himself in a little bit of trouble. Tell me he did not just say that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see if we'll see if we can get Booker in a little bit of trouble on the show. No, 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 we're going to be good to Booker. But a very excited. I'm, I'm trying to get him for a. I'm going to try to get him for a seminar because he's. I guess they're doing a Thursday Friday show because Impact's in town Saturday and Sunday. Oh, there you go. And yeah, so busy weekend. If I say quite the weekend of wrestling. Yeah. So, but we will be having Booker T joining us. So make sure you tune in for that. And of course, want to remind everybody: if you want to listen to any of our shows, all these amazing shows that the three of us are doing, and James too. Just head on over to markhokeshow.podbean.com. And, of course, it's available on all your favorite podcast outlets. Give us a listen. Shows are up on YouTube as well. We need people to start listening on YouTube. i got to maybe do some more stuff there. But uh, we'd certainly appreciate that. And, of course, and follow us at Mark Hoke Show, Facebook, The Mark Hoke Show. And, of course, we've got Fish on his Twitter at the Fish 1969 You can follow Woo-hoo. future stars of wrestling at FSW Vegas. On Twitter, and uh, by the way, also don't forget check out all of Joe's great shows that he's doing. Yeah, much and more. the Academy. Uh, that's yeah, FSWVegas dot com. So get over to the website, right, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. FSW Network. You can see, you know, Karrion Cross and Keith Lee matches, and Brian Cage and Matt Hardy and Zoe Stark and Solo. Whatever they wanted to give him his last name. <laughs> Solo Uso. You know? Uso, yeah. Yeah. Say Us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jimmy Uso the second. <laughs> so, yeah. So make sure you check out FSWVegas.com for all that. And, yeah, get it. Get a subscription. I, Joe should give me one for free, though. Come on. Yeah, I will. Okay. I appreciate now that. Now that you asked. All right. Aw. Oh, you don't get one fish. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just happy for the two of you. <laughs> I'll, I'll share my password. <laughs> All right. Uh, some other stuff that we want to make sure we get to today, uh, because of course we have to do our predictions for full gear coming up. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But the other big news that happened this week was John Moxley has gone into inpatient alcohol rehab. And an announcement was made by Tony Khan on Twitter on Tuesday, and he was immediately pulled uh, from the championship tournament that AEW was holding. That he was in the semifinals. He was in the semifinals and setting up for the match with Danielson at full gear, but he was pulled out of that. Uh, Miro replaced him in the tournament, and uh, Moxley is... Was this his choice, or was it... AEW told him to go. It, it that really hasn't been revealed, but I'm Joe. Joe might know or, a little better or about did, that. Or, but, or did uh, Renee tell him to go? Well, you know, it's hard to say. But John or, or Joe, geez, John, John, Joe Moxley, yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> somebody get me a beer, Joe. Uh, you know, Mox, what's uh, what's going on there? Is this something that's going on for a while? What's uh, what have you heard about this situation? No, I, I don't really know him. Well, you know, well enough, but, you know, I know a lot of wrestlers like to partake, you know, and Shocking. I guess sometimes they might get a little overzealous, you know, Matt Hardy, you know, he was in the same situation 
where, you know, he had to take a step back and, you know, Matt kind of changed everything, got himself in great shape, you know, with Moxley, you know, you know, he, he's kind of uh, a, a man who does uh, things on his own, whatever way he wants to do, as I stated in the past. It's like he's not motivated by how much money he can make. And I saw like a, an interview that they showed about him. And yeah, and again, of course he wants to make money. And he was talking about why he had to leave. And he chose to leave because it was too much of a toxic environment for him. So, you know, <laughs> if he feels he needs that, you know, I would think it was probably more his wife than AEW, to be honest with you. Well, and that was something that when when we were talking about him doing the mat, the death matches and that one that he just brutalized his back and, you know, Renee had said, you know, got on Twitter and said I, that she hated this. I, yeah, obviously now Mox has to think about not just him, but his wife and his new child. And, you know, there there had to be some responsibility, a little extra responsibility. I mean, we all, you know, those of us that are parents know that once that happens, you get married and you have kids, everything changes and your perspective changes. And, you know, maybe maybe John just saw that, you know, some things were out of hand and said, hey, I got to take a step back. I, and one thing that I'm, I'm curious about as well is, you know, when I was in the poker world uh, and seeing people traveling from tournament to tournament and losing money all the time and, would either be really high or really low. There was a lot of depression, a lot of drug use. Oh, absolutely. A lot of, a lot of drinking going on. And I could only imagine what a professional wrestler would go through, no matter what the level. Uh, you know, either if you're on the independent scene and you're just trying to go paycheck to paycheck, or the pressure that you know, working 150, 200 dates in WWE would, would do to you and having to work through the pain. The, the depression issues, the addiction issues that wrestlers face, you know, I, Mox ain't the only one. Oh, absolutely not. And and I would imagine, you know, Joe, you probably see that every day, too, that the guys are going through this. And gals. And, you know, it, it's just, just totally different these days. The mental health issues are taking time off. And, and we see that with our younger students, that a few of them are kind of, you know, taking time away. They they need to do this, and it's like they haven't even started their journey. And the day-to-day -day life issues of them sure seems to affect them way more than when I was a kid. You know, you know, as I when I was a kid, you know, I have the same issues with my son. You know, every everything's a big deal, and it's like, you know, I'm the kind of person like he didn't learn that from me. I kind of like, you know what? It was a horror story. The 16 days I was in New York trying to get back to Vegas because of my mother's dog that, you know, we needed to get it back. Literally changed the flight nine times. We got stuck at the airport. It looked like it was going to be for 13 hours. You know what? But there's nothing you can do about it. So are you going to make yourself even sicker? Yeah, I mean, you know, I and I'll, I'll be frank. I just went through a huge fight with my 12-year-old daughter yesterday. You know, yeah, that but, was just a, a living hell. And, you know, but then when I, you know, but I look at the issues, you know, I, I mean, I, I won't get into my childhood or anything like that. It wasn't exactly the most pleasant time. But, you know, I, I look at what she's saying she's going through. And to me, it, it's nothing in point, comparison. No, and yeah, I, and, but you got to remember now Mox's life has changed completely, too, because now Renee, I don't know if she had the baby or she's just yeah. very, very pregnant, but he's yeah, now a father. So he's no longer the single guy out there just, just on the road and having a good time. He is now responsible for not only Renee, but their child. Yep. So it's, it's a whole different set of responsibilities is now on his head. Yeah, and and certainly the, the if you got to have seen excerpts from the book that he wrote, which everybody's just saying is fantastic, it, it the WWE experience was horrible for him, especially towards the end. It was just, you know, he, he was so happy to get out of there. I... And I, you know, if if they were doing to me what the, they did to him, I I'd, I'd probably be drinking a little bit too, just a tad. But uh, yeah, but, <laughs> but you know, it, it's better than the old days when they would get all coked up and liquored up. So you know, liquored up is at least a step down. You know, people like a lot of injuries. You know, so what do you do? You take pills. Well, sometimes you guys want to drink. You know, drink to 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 numb the pain a little, and then. You know, unfortunately, sometimes uh, it gets too much for them. And, 
you know, he decided to make a change. And like I said, I think it's more on, on the wife who had to deal with him, especially because of the AEW schedule. It's not like the WWE schedule back in the day. You're working six days a week. You ain't getting days off. Right. A- AEW show for a couple days, and sometimes they'll do tapings, and, you know, you don't work for two weeks. Yeah, I, I can only imagine what the guys back in the territory days were going through. You know, if they if they said, if they would have said, hey, I need a mental health night off, <laughs> You'd have been gone. Yeah, your your spot is your spot is completely taken. You know, so and and the pain that they went through. I mean, you know, we you go back and look at somebody like Ric Flair's schedule when he was the NWA champion, wrestling hundreds of times a year. Uh, you know, you you, you don't you kind of understand why the man drank a little bit, you know, and did things to escape. Was well, some of it not right? But you know, it's it, it was brutal back then. Absolutely brutal. You didn't have well, the, what's the it wellness now. I'm sorry? Yeah, what's, he said, "What's the excuse now?" Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's you know, it's a tough spot, but but we want you know, to. It's, like, it's like being a rock star, man. It's like you got you got all these people, you know, treat you like you know you, you're the biggest star in the world. You're king, you know. Same thing with the rock stars. They they all have the same issues. The Hollywood stars, you know. But Michael, they, Mike, they, go ahead. I was going to say they get carte blanche. It wasn't until the last couple of years now that all of a sudden all that stuff that's coming out now, you know, I got guys I know and they're like, man, we used to tell these stories. It was like a, a rite of passage. It's like now we can't say any of that stuff because somebody might hear it and, you know, they'll get canceled. Yeah, it'll get offended and it, 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 get, it goes overboard and gets a little ridiculous. But my question is the timing for, for what's going on with Moxley I, I know AEW is very progressive with everything they do, but is this going to be an issue as far as, you know, there's all, all this influx of talent coming in now. Is, is he in danger of losing a spot in AEW because of this? Yeah, I don't think so. I, I think John is entrenched. Look uh, at Sammy Guevara. You know, they had to cancel yeah. him for a month or so, and they brought him back, and, you know, he won the won a title. Okay. You know, Fair enough. Yeah, Max Caster, same thing. You know, he's he's back yeah. again. You know, if somebody was going to get released because of that, it would have been that dude. He was an AEW dark guy, but they saw potential in him, and they thought, hey, you know what? This guy might be pretty good. So we're just going to give him a little slap on the wrist, you know. And that was for a – wasn't even a low carter. He was a non-carter, and they didn't get rid of him. You're going to tell me that they're going to get rid of Moxley? No shot. Yeah, Moxley's uh, and and when he comes back, he's gonna he's gonna get cheered pretty hard. So we'll look forward. Oh, to oh yeah, absolutely will. And uh, well, speaking of AEW, let's hit that full gear card because this one's I mean got changed a little bit here with uh, Moxley's absence, but still some fun matches on this card. Let's uh, give this a rundown. Uh, we'll I'm gonna start at the bottom of the list I've got here. Let's get our predictions. Christian Cage and Jurassic Express. Taking on the super click, Adam Cole and the, the Young Butts in a six-man tag team falls count anywhere match. Fish, who you got? <sighs> Christian Cage and Jurassic Express, they're going to give the face face a little more love. Yeah, well, Joe, who's going over on this one? Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty certain that's a good spot for uh, Jungle Boy to get a victory over the Young Bucks, puts them in line for the, you know, for the titles. Yeah. Christian doesn't need to pin anybody. Uh, you know, I guess Christian's there to give the rub, but I'm, I'm not sure in AEW if it isn't Jurassic Park giving him the rub. Last time I gave someone the rub, I never mind. Wow. <laughs> wow. Talk about that's cancel a, culture. <laughs> They're a back room at the Cheesecake Factory we don't know about there. Uh, I'm going to go against you guys. I'm taking the Super Click. Sorry. I could be wrong, but, you know, who knows? This one got some great hype, a terrific promo. CM Punk and Eddie Kingston should be a pretty hard-hitting match. Joe, who you got on this one? Well, let's see. Eddie Kingston has fought really well and has been unbelievable and never wins. Why would it change now? I completely agree with Joe. Yeah, I'm going to take CM Punk's, but you know, it, it, I, I will say this: it would be fun to see Eddie win this match. Maybe yeah, set definitely something up. would. I think it, that would that would set something up very a nice feud for a good feud for Punk. 
because he's just been going through guy you know, guy after guy. But so I think far. I think Punk still wants to do that. That's why I don't think he, they're going to try to set up any feuds for him per se. I think they're just going to have him go guy to guy, which is what he wanted to do. It was meet these different guys in the locker room that he hasn't had a chance to face before. Yeah. So well, we'll, you know, it depends on what they have planned for Eddie Kingston moving forward. Right. So we'll see, but uh, we're all going to take the take Punk on that one. Darby Allen was Sting in the corner taking on our good buddy MJF with Wardlow. What do you got here? Is is Darby gonna put one on MJF? No, I I, I think I think uh, Darby stares up at the lights. I, I like MJF in this one. Joe, yeah, MJF has got so much heat behind him, and they're in danger of ruining that heat if he can't like win the big one. Yeah, he's got to keep going. I agree. I and too. that ain't the and beating Darby Allen. That it's good and all, but it ain't the big one. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking. For, win that. I'm looking forward to seeing MJF getting that getting that elite group and wrestling guys like Brian Danielson and Punk and so on. Yeah, so MJF all the way there. Lucha Brothers taking on FTR for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. Fish Lucha Brothers retain. Uh, FTR has they don't they have the AAA tag team right now? FTR has the yeah. AAA tag that's what I said. Teams. FTR has AAA, but Lucha Brothers are, are the AEW tag team champs. I think Lucha Brothers retain. Joe. Yeah, you know, I think the same thing. That it, it took them forever and split them up and did singles and had Pentagon team and with Kingston. It's like, are you really going to give them the belts and take them away that quick? I'm going to also go with you guys, even though I'd love to see FTR win. I will also take the Lucha Brothers. Inner Circle, Jericho, Hager, Guevara, Santana, Ortiz taking on Men of the Year, Ethan Page, Scorpio Sky, and America's American top team, Junior Dos Santos, Andre or- Arlovsky, the former UFC champions, and Dan Lambert managed to shoot off his mouth and got in the match. Who takes this one down? Joe? Say that again. We got the inner circle against men of the year and American top team. Well, hey, uh, exactly. Inner circle. Uh, I, yeah, I... Uh, I, Wasn't that guy like really annoying and nobody cared about him in Impact? Dan Lambert, yeah. So like, what's the what's what's the gig with him that people give him work? I don't know, but I'm going to go against you guys. I think Men of the Year and America Top Team win it, and I'm not going to be surprised if Dan Lambert does not get the fall in this match. I'm going to put a little bonus prediction on that. What is he, Vince Russo? Is he booking the show, this guy? I don't know, but <laughs> you know how that goes sometimes. You you throw in the manager or something like that, and all of a sudden the manager's the one that gets the fall. So. You know what? I think I'm going to have to win the FSW title sometime, just I, to say I did. I'd like I to see that. Should. I think that'd be amazing. If you wanted a tag team match, uh, I'll, I'll team with you. There you go. Finger poke of doom, brother. <laughs> Brian Danielson against Miro. Miro, of course, uh, got thrown into the AEW World Championship Eliminator Tournament. It'll be Miro and Brian Danielson. Fish, who is coming out on the top? I think Brian Danielson. I think they had Danielson going over no matter who. I think they had Danielson going over Moxley as well. So I think Danielson wins this and gets a title shot. Joe? Miro still works there? Yeah. Oh. Only one loss for Miro. Okay. Well, he's kind of like... Once he lost to Guevara, he's kind of fallen by the wayside. So uh, they're trying to build Danielson up for the the big guns with like Adam Cole matches and 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 Omega and things like that. He can't lose. And I will agree. Brian Danielson takes the victory on this. I, like I said, I think they had him booked to win regardless of who he was facing. I think it's going to be a really good like match. I, I think it was be it would have been a great match. What happened to his sound? I can't hear him. I think we had a great match against Moxley, but I I'm absolutely sure that they were going to have they were I'm I you know I thought it would be Moxley would would have been great, but I think he'll go over Miro easily. All right, Doctor Britt Baker DMD taking on Tay Conti for the AEW World Women's Championship. Does Doctor Britt Baker hold on to the title, Joe? I think Eva Marie's going to show up and she's going to win the title. <laughs> oh no! She's going to no. bring. She's going to bring Dewdrop. No, double no. Fish, Not. DMD, DMD. Yeah, on. yeah. Without a doubt, yeah. she's you know. No, no question. She's in a different league of her own on that other one. Yes, she is. Now this is the intriguing one that is going to set some could set some things up for a long time. 
the championship match, the AEW world title on the line, Kenny Omega against the man they've been building up all this time, Hangman Adam Page. But with the talent influx that's come in, is Page going to get out of there with the world title? Not a chance. Wow. They're going to keep it on Kenny Omega. Slamming the door on they're Page. Set, they're, they're setting up Danielson and Omega, which is the match that they had once. Actually, I think they've had it twice already. Once was a draw, and once Omega won. I think they're setting up Danielson and Omega, and Danielson will beat Omega for the title. So I think Omega beats Page. Yeah, Joe, this is, as a as a promoter and a booker, do you put the title on Page even if it's just for a little while? No, I, I would do a build, you know, let them win it at the, the big, big, you know, whatever it is, you know, all out or whatever they're going to do. If that's what they're going to do, I think the worst thing that happened to Adam Page is they got CM Punk and Brian Danielson because those dream matches aren't as much of a dream match if it isn't for the title. So I don't think Omega is going anywhere. And Adam Page is... As much as he's over and the, the crowd's behind him and stuff, I, I just think you don't give your championship to the sixth or seventh best guy on the roster. Yeah, this is a tough spot for Page because he w- he was on his way to winning the title. He was. Yeah, but uh, like I said, with the influx of talent, there's no way they can put the belt on Page at this point. Are you sure? I'm positive. You sure? I don't know. But I, I will go with Kenny Omega, but... I will put my usual, won't be surprised if. Adam you Page know, I, I can't believe they made Omega lose to Christian, so you never know. Yeah, and and it's it would seem like it would be such a great reward for Page after all this build up to win the title. But yeah, this is it's it's tough when you're looking at a, at potential matches with Omega taking on Danielson and CM Punk for the title. It's. Mm. I feel bad for Paige, but I, I don't think he's walking out of there with the title. No, and then I think Adam Cole has, is going to have his shot later down the line as well. Even though it would be fun to see it go Paige Cole and then Adams Cole. The Adams you know, Cole Punk, you know, something like that. There, there's a lot of different ways they could take this. It's it's a pretty intriguing, uh, intriguing situation between uh, all the top guys in AEW. So there you go. There's your predictions. I think I, I, think I disagree with you guys enough that uh, I'm going to have it on the line this weekend. Maybe. Fish. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that conversation went uh, nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> nowhere in a hurry. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, and uh, real quick, we got a couple minutes left. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to get to the snap call, which I wrote again, but we'll we'll save it. There's a lot too much happening. Uh, Survivor Series. Uh, why are the Mysterios on the Raw team? Oh, man. I'll tell you. They what do they say? Every single guy was like, on the other on the other show, like a month ago, out of twenty of people announced on those teams, fifteen were on a different show a month ago. It, 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 it's <laughs> I'm, I'm actually speechless because it's so ridiculous. It, it is amazing. I'm, I'm just trying to find my Survivor Series teams here real quick so I can run them. Seth down. Rollins, Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, and the two Mysterios of the Raw team. Are you kidding me? And they all hate Seth Rollins. I guess they go to uh, restart the Seth Rollins Ray Mysterio feud. Maybe he's going to poke his other eye out. Yeah, I know. Maybe it's not his eye. He's going to be poking out. This that that is the only intriguing storyline for that team because but every one of those they, people they, have a beef with but, Seth. Rollins. But they will not mention that. I guarantee you that the the losing the eye match will not get mentioned in the build up to Survivor Series. I'm going to bet you a dollar it does. Okay, you got, you're got you on. It will not get I mentioned. I will bet you a dollar it does. I mean, it, it may does. get mentioned in passing, but it will not be a major theme throughout uh, the hey, build-up. Hey, to... we, just, we just said it no, gets I mentioned. Know. I know, and I'll pay right. you the dollar if it gets mentioned in passing, right. but I'm telling you, if it does, it will only be in passing. It will not be a major theme of this team as it should have been. That is uh, that is intriguing. Uh, they will be taking on the SmackDown team of Drew McIntyre, Jeff Hardy, Xavier Woods, Sami Zayn and our good buddy Baron Corbin. So Sami Zayn and Baron Corbin are the only guys who have been on this show for longer than a month. Right. That is correct, sir. And it's not Baron Corbin. It's Happy Corbin. I wonder if Madcap Moss will... God, that's just ridiculous, those characters. <sighs> and what a missed opportunity to put AJ Styles with Finn Balor. And put, and get, get put, your put, Oma, put Oma, and put Omos on that team. Instead of getting Mysterio's out, Styles and Omos go on that team, and all of a sudden the team is pretty amazing. Yeah. 
The women's team is Oy. Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Carmella, and Zelina Vega taking on Sasha Banks, Shayna Baszler, Shotzi, Natalia, and Aaliyah. Where's Dewdrop? A- A- Aaliyah hasn't even wrestled yet. No Dewdrop. No Tony Storm. All Aaliyah, all, all that's happened to Aaliyah is Sami Zayn has commented on her outfit. I think Eva Marie's going to do a run in and get her job back. <laughs> Joe, why don't you just sign her and make her your women's champion? Danielle you know Dashwood is going to come back. She trained out in Santino's. I think she lives in California. So if I need a really bad wrestling match, I'll make sure I book her. Wow. Poor Eva Marie. I, th- I think she's got career moves elsewhere. So. You know, she's a good character. They can utilize her in a different role. Just don't have her wrestle. She gets heat. That is, that's part of the job. She gets heat. You know, and, and, and believe me, it takes a lot for a good-looking woman to get heat in the wrestling business. Yeah. Yes, it does. Well, she was also kind of a moron. Yeah. Well, all right. Hey, that's going to wrap it up. Joe DeFalco, Andrew Fishfein, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Uh, once again, follow the show at Mark Hoke Show on Twitter. Facebook, The Mark Hoke Show, markhokeshow.com, the website. And don't forget, next week, the five time champ, Booker T, joining us. Mike Jones in the booth. Five time, for five, time, five time, five time, five time, five time. I've that gig so many times on the poker show, you wouldn't believe it. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. We'll see you probably next Saturday night. Have a good one.